Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm going to be talking all about the most dangerous light tank in World of Tanks for you to face. It is the AMX 13105. Now, I'm not talking about the wheeled vehicle, the EBR 105. That is also a very dangerous vehicle, but for a very different reason. And it's the same as the T100LT, both very proficient scouts. But this one is the damage dealer. This is the vehicle that has a 105mm autoloader that is capable of doing 1,170 damage to you within 5.5 seconds of the first shot. That is some absolute amazing burst damage to have on a light tank. And when you can combine that with mobility to be able to get into the position first, you can set up an ambush for probably the most dangerous tank on the enemy team. Of course, it's the, the Pseudo Chieftain, aka the Donker of the T95 FV4201. Even one kind of a shot into a vehicle like that, anything that I can do to soften them up, considering, can you imagine what a dream matchup it is for a vehicle like that when they're against tier 8 tanks and there's no artillery? That's where this vehicle is just so strong. I don't know what this bulldog was thinking, but yeah, I didn't even need the third shot. Bulldog, 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 I'm sorry. I know it's unfortunate that you've managed to get yourself into a tier 10 game, but here's a piece of advice. Don't sit in front of the AMX 13105. It's not like any other light tank. This one is a substantial damage dealer. And I'm going to let you know why I am actually preferring this vehicle. I can't believe I'm going to say this. To my boy, it's the Bat Chatillon 25T. Now, I've played... There's only, I think, three or four tanks that I've played a thousand games in in World of Tanks. One is the M48A5 Patton, my most played tank. Then I believe it's the Bat Chatillon, which I've actually played more games in the Bat Chatillon than I've even played in the Comet. And then after that, I think it's the E75. But the more that I play the Bat Chat in the recent meta, with the fact that there's a TVP, there's a Progetto, and even though the Progetto's been nerfed, I still feel like it does compete very heavily with the, the Bat Chatillon. The more that I play that tank, the more that I just feel as if it's not the same as it used to be. And I just find myself getting frustrated at the vehicle. Sure, it can be an amazing assassin with a five-round magazine that makes the three-round magazine on this vehicle look awful. And the same intra-clip reload so you can burst the damage out just as quickly as the light tank. The bat chat just feels as it doesn't have the other advantages that you can get on the 13105. Now, very sneaky move here by the Object 268 version 4. He was trying to reverse to try and body block me. But okay, mate, you can give me your side. Try and make the light tank panic. I'm not going to panic in a vehicle like this. I'm going to lock down your tracks and finish you off. And we've just taken out one of the most dangerous tank destroyers in the game. If not the most dangerous tank destroyer. Is everything the most dangerous tank? A lot of you might be thinking. Well, yeah, it's the Object 268 version 4. And then here's the medium tank as well. Can you believe what kind of a stacked team the enemy had? They have the Chieftain, the Donkara, we have the T-125, they have the 268 version 4, we have the Object 26, uh, 268, they have a 430U, and we had a TVP. I think that, uh, we fair enough, we have an autoloader advantage, but you think that the enemy team would be absolutely destroying us right now, but the shoe's on the other foot. The AMX-13105, just this smaller magazine, I can tell you that I actually kind of prefer it to the bigger magazine sometimes. Sure, the, the five-round magazine on the Bat Chatillon is fabulous for when you want to go in and assassinate a vehicle that has about 1,800 hit points, because you can do that in a single magazine. But how often is that the case in World of Tanks? You don't often get these base best-case scenarios. And a vehicle like the AMX-13105, which reloads faster and then unloads three rounds, just feels like I'm more flexible on the battlefield. Combine this with eight degrees of gun depression and also better gun handling on a light tank than on the medium tank and I am in love with this vehicle at least I was during my tech tree showcase on Sunday because I feel that now with my new equipment setup and I'm gonna share with you just as I nail this IS-32 on the move and you might be wondering how did you connect those shells so convincingly and so confidently on the move there against the side of the Soviet heavy tank well that's because I'm trying out a new setup on the AMX-13105 I'm not using coated optics um, I'm not using a commander's vision system. Hold on, this is a tier 10 light tank, right? Surely you're meant to be using those things on a vehicle like this. No, I've got my scouts. I've got scouts like the T100LT. I've got scouts like the EBR-105. I've even got scouts like the Manticore. The way that I'm setting this vehicle up is for damage dealing. Quick, 
bursty magazines helping out vehicles like the T125 deal with their troubles and then I'm going to be able to get away faster than any medium tank would be able to to re-engage another target. We're flowing around the battlefield. We're changing all of these little micro-engagements that could have gone into the enemy team's favour into our favour. And that's one of the reasons that I'm able to do this is because I've equipped what I would feel is a great damage setup for this tank. I've got vents which you can put inside the spotting slot to give yourself 6% crew skill. But on top of that, the reason why the gun handling looks god tier on this tank right now is because I'm double stacking vertical stabilizers and a rotation device as well. To give this tank, I am using bounty equipment, but you can do the same thing with regular equipment, 40% reduced dispersion when moving, when turning the turret, and also when turning the tank, which gives this tank not god tier gun handling, but for an autoloader, really, really good gun handling, which allows me to feel so much more confident in my shells. And it has revolutionized the way that I feel about the AMX 13105. One thing's for certain about World of Tanks in 2020, and it, it really just dawned on me during the Tech Tree Showcase. Everything's got a little bit faster. Everything's got a bit better DPM. Everything feels like its aim time is better. Everything feels as if everything's got more gun depression. The maps aren't really what the bat chat would like to have constantly these days and i feel that the bat chat has just stayed put while everything else has got better and i feel that you just can't make use of the bat chat's magazine anymore and you can't make use of the fact that it's not the best of scouts so this vehicle for me has sort of like a reconnaissance autoloader a bit like a tvp but just so much better for the concealment role than the tvp is so the Chieftain's going to come around the corner here and react quickly to be able to get a high explosive round into my tracks, failing to be able to damage my tank. I'm firing heat rounds, one, two, three into him, although the third one doesn't actually manage to go through because it goes into the tracks and the AP would have been better there. But still, another couple of rounds into the Chieftain, who's probably had a cracking game up on top of the hill as well with four kills and in a very awkward situation here. If I was in a Chieftain, I'd be thinking, whoa, great opportunity for a Kolobanov's medal and possibly even, no, he can't quite get a Pools medal anymore because he's only against five, right? Oh, what a shame. But not when there is the AMX 13105 on the enemy team in the hands of uh, a, a, an okay player, an okay player. So I'm going to try and ask my friends to help me. Please flank him and I'll be able to shut him down. However, I hear him fire at the ELC even 90. He's clearly going to be turning around, but it is too little, too late, and a heat round into the lower plate. And I pick up a very cool Rantley Walters medal here in sub eight minutes. Sub eight minutes, but we still pick up eight kills. And shutting down all of the tier 10 vehicles on the enemy team, apart from the EBR 105, just made me feel as if I was kind of playing a Bat Chatillon eight years ago. You know, when the Bat Chat's combat capacity felt like it was one of the special things about the tank. And consequently, the AMX 13105 feels like it's a bit of a sweet spot for me inside the game at the moment, which is why I'm doing my most damage and significantly the most damage, pretty much 25% more damage compared to any of my other light tanks in the game with the 13105. Now, this setup that I tested on the vehicle with using a rotation device and vertical stabilizers definitely improves the combat capacity of the vehicle. But be warned that when you need to be that pure light tank scout, maybe you've gone into Prokhorovka and you're against an EBR or a T100 LT and they've set themselves up with coated optics, vents, and maybe a commander's vision system, you will definitely struggle. So I'm not saying that this is undoubtedly the best way to play the AMX 13105. It is a way. And for me personally, it's so fun to have a high impact damage dealing light vehicle where you can really feel you can control the engagements in your favor. And when you've got an autoloader, that's half of the victory right there. But be warned, if you do set your vehicle up in this way and you end up on some of the more traditional scout maps in the game, and especially when there are actually artillery in your games of World of Tanks, which is the majority of the cases, then this kind of a setup um, is not going to do so well. So a light tank, but a heavy impact in this round of World of Tanks. 
although it was a very nice matchup. This was a Radley Walters medal for our 8 kills for killing over half of the enemy team, and an Ace Tanker for 1,176 base experience points. That's not a huge amount of base experience points, showing me that maybe this vehicle isn't played the best. And we still managed to make some profit, even though we had to dip into the heat ammunition towards the latter part of the game. Do you know one thing that's ridiculous about this vehicle as well? Is it actually carries more ammunition than the Bat Chatillon. Carrying 33 rounds instead of 13, while definitely not the biggest of differences, I'm still finding reasons to love the 13105 over loving the Bat Chatillon 25T. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments if you go and try your AMX 13105 with vents, a rotation device, and also vertical stabilizers. Let me know if it works out for you, or let me know whether it was absolutely awful. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.